very quick high level analysis over on the quality of the sexes which was a um a poem that was really the introductory portion of an essay that Judith Sargent Murray wrote, which was a, an early feminist essay directed towards um, male leaders of the political sphere, the religious sphere, um, these different areas of society. And what she does is essentially looks at these ideas associated with, um, somewhat with the Enlightenment movement, um, around the, the the intellectual abilities of the individual and how your sex makes absolutely no difference um, in terms of, of your your abilities as a thinker as a, as a, a free and independent person so um, it's a little bit of a wry kind of look and, and take on this concept um, so she begins with that minds are not alike full well I know the truth each day ex experience shows we are all individual essentially we're not the same um, so heights surprising great spirits soar with inborn strength mysterious depths galore so this is the idea of sort of a spiritual element a spiritual concept um, and she's saying that every in person is is an individual every person has a depth of soul and if you think about it she's really speaking about all individuals of all walks of life of all um, different uh, backgrounds and experiences so she could in a sense also be speaking about um, people who are have different um, skin colors and, and different things so it's a fairly if it's very um, at the time a very um, insightful piece looking at multiple facets of society so um she says their eager gaze surveys the path of light so light again this is kind of the idea of intellectual enlightenment the idea of spiritual enlightenment are all intertwined um if you remember the oversoul is kind of connected to to these concepts and she has an allusion here confessed it stood to newton's piercing sight so she has an allusion to newton as the as you know one of the great scientific thinkers um as a sort of foundational um, uh, purview over these individuals. Um, so she's saying, deep science, like a bashful maid retires. So we have the simile of a bashful maid retires, and but the ardent breast her worth inspires. By the perseverance, the coy fair is one, and genius, here we're personifying genius, led by study, wears the crown. So she here is talking about this, the intellectual concepts of science, of STEM, of um, basically the the scientific nature of people, regardless of their sex. So she's saying genius, being a personified um, uh, entity in this case, is led by study, not by your your gender or by um, whether you like essentially whether you are male or female does not make a difference in how you can apply yourself to understanding the sciences or understanding anything intellectual in this in this movement um and she says but and here's the turn but there are those who wish not to improve who never can the path of knowledge love whose souls almost with the dull body one with anxious care each mental pleasure shun so here she she delights in the idea of a mental pleasure so a mental exercise is for her um, she's saying something that is pure and good and and in and of itself a delight to the body um, and she's she's basically tearing down those who would shun this so she says she acknowledges there are those who do not seek intellectual do not have intellectual curiosity um, and she says that they can scarcely boast its origin from God. So the idea that intellectualism is a gift from God, is something tied to divinity, is the, the curiosity of the mind. Um, all of these things are tied, again, back to that idea of the oversoul, right? Where you have one's soul's relation with different entities. Um, and she says these people who have no intellectual capacity um, are are um, uh, basically connected to connected to um, this idea of sort of earthly um, no. earthly um, delights rather than the intellectual delights so um, 
they are dull they progress from day to day they do their daily work and they eat and they drink and that's it um and those who are sort of drawn to a higher purpose intellectual purpose um have this understanding that knowledge and intellectual capacity is where um true fulfillment comes from and she ties this idea back to nature and all its beauteous order so if you you understand the scientific principle of nature is that um, nature is supposed to be perfect nature is supposed to have a a, a, a rigidity to it but also a sort of art to it and there's different elements of nature that are that are based in math so if you know the idea I think I forget what it's called, but it's, I believe, like, the perfect triangle or something like that. Um, nature always has threes or fives, so flower petals are always in threes or fives or sevens. Um, there is a sort of perfect nature of nature, and that's what she's tying back to beauty and art and, and science and math all kind of connected. Um, and she says, yet I cannot there sentiments imbibe who this distinction to the sex ascribe if a woman's form must needs enroll a weak and servile and inferior soul so um she's saying essentially that i cannot stand or or take seriously the sentiments of these frankly these these kind of idiots as she's saying who live their daily life who have no aspirations to a higher experience of knowledge um when they say that there's a distinction in in sex as far as the intellectual capacity of a woman um that she is somehow weak or servile or inferior soul to theirs um and she says that the guise of a man must still proclaim greatness of mind and him to be the same so that it is the sort of um, um fake nature of man kind of large large man um to say that their form the male form is somehow makes them have greater capacity of mind um and so it says uh yet as the hours revolve fair proofs arise which the bright wreath of growing fame supplies in the past times some men have sunk so low that female records nothing less can show so she's saying that essentially time evolves um, and fame elevates certain people of certain sexes to positions of authority on subject matters, which they may or may not be actual. Um, basically, it's saying that they can bury the, the achievements of women in, in time and history and society while elevating men to certain statures that may or may not deserve that stature. Um, and it says, but imbecility is still confined by, by the lordly sex to us consigned. So there's, um, there's a satire here that she's trying to sort of sardonic basically way of saying, um, the lordly sex to us consigned they rob us of the power to improve and then declare we only trifles love so she's saying men are in power and they take that power and they remove women's ability to be agents of their own intellectual ability their own life their own um, records in society basically the achievements that they achieve are taken from them by the men in power and then those same men have the gall to turn around and say that they are simply um you know silly creatures who are obsessed with trifling things um she says yet haste the era so here comes the era when the world will shall know that such such distinctions only dwell below the soul unfettered to no sex confined was for the bodes of cloudless day designs so that means essentially that the soul in itself is not consigned to a particular sex so the soul and this does kind of tie back to the the idea of the oversoul and the enlightenment and the individual and the intellectual rights of the individual is that the soul is not consigned to particular sex the soul is a, is a being is a free entity in and of itself inside of a being and that the day is coming is what she's saying when we will see that there is no 
inherent difference in the intellectual capacity and ability of a man versus a woman because the mind and the soul are separate from the idea of sex. Um, so it, it's just a fantastic poem. And she says, meantime, we emulate their manly fire. So she's saying, in the meantime, we, we imitate, we emulate, you know, the leaders in these spaces, which is men, through eridation, all their thought inspires. So we basically put up with, we flatter, we, we appeal to their sense of vanity um, as men and as leaders who have been intellectual leaders. However, yet nature with equality imparts a noble passion swelling female hearts. So she's saying nature in and of itself is impartial when it comes to the mind, the, the intellectual capacity, the, the soul. Um, and she's saying that day is coming when there is that sense of equality between men and women um, and the passions of women or noble passions, which is a, a key phrase that she says, um, and their intellectual capacity, intellectual passions are basically treated with equality in society. So um, think about the time period that she wrote this in. Think about her positionality as an author. Think about the kind of the revolutionary concepts that she's talking about and how she sort of at once calls out um, the men who are oppressing or um, dismissing the intellectual capacities of women while at the same time saying I understand that we can't change society overnight and she's saying in the meantime we'll, we'll, we'll play their game but the day is coming when this is no longer going to have to be the case so that's Unequality of the Sexes it's a fantastic poem I hope you guys enjoyed it and go ahead and move on <laughs>